Hello guys and welcome back to the Minecraft Mod tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to be starting on our we're going to be doing our tile entity. And we might get onto some other stuff depending on how long this takes. So let's get started. Scroll down into your block class, hover over create new tile entity sintering furnace and create it. I'm going to leave it in the same place. You can create a tile entity package if you want. But I'm going to do it like this. What I'm going to do is copy everything in and I'll go through and explain it to you. It's a very large class, so I do recommend also recommend pasting it in. I'm going to import everything. So it implements I inventory and I tickable. I inventory means that it's an inventory storing things. So it's going to store our two inputs and um, our fuel and our output. And I tickable gives us the update function. Um, which runs every single tick Which is one twentieth of a second then we create a list or call the inventory Which is the size of four as I just mentioned the two inputs the fuel and the output We have four variables which we update Called burn time current burn time cook time and total cook time and then we also have our string custom name So the first function we have is the get name function This checks if it has a custom name and if it does, it sets it to the custom name. If it doesn't, it sets it to container.sintering furnace, which now if we go into the lang, enuslang, we can put this at the top and save. The has custom name function returns true when custom name is not, not equal to null and when it's not empty. So when it does have a custom name, um, set custom name, just sets the our custom name variable to the um, custom name output inside of tile entity. Get display name. This is an iText component. So it once again it checks if it has a custom name and it creates a text component string of this name or a text component translation of this name. We also want to get how big the inventory is. So we just get this dot inventory dot size, which we have up here, is our inventory of four. So this will return four. The is empty function is a boolean and returns true when something is null. So we check um, all the item stacks in our inventory and if it if there is something in the item stack, in every single item stack, then we return false. If there isn't something, we return true. Next, the get stack in slot function, this function returns where we get the actual slot from our inventory so we get for the index so say zero zero and one are inputs two is the fuel and three is uh, the output so we get that slot we make it into an item stack and we return it so we get the stack that's in the slot the decrease stack size function we use item stack helper a class um, which just has a, lot, a few functions that we can use for um, working with item stacks and inventories and we get and split the item stack from the inventory we get which slot it's in and we get how much um, how many we want to remove and then we remove them um, remove stack from slot removes all of them no matter the count so we use the item stack helper again get and remove and we no longer require the count variable. Now we're getting to more complicated ones, so I'll go a bit slower. Set inventory stock, stock contents takes in obviously the slot index and a stack. We first um, create an item stack um, for each slot. So when we get the index, we create a flag to make sure that the stack does exist. There is something there, it's not empty and that the two item stacks, the one we're trying to put in and the one that's already in there are the same. And then this item stacks are stack tags equal checks to see if their metadata is the same. If all of that is true, the boolean flag returns true, else it returns false. So firstly, we set each of the stacks into the index at the start. If the stack.getCount is greater than inventory stack limit, so inventory stack limit, we're going to set it to 64 down here. So if this is greater than 64, 
then we just set it to 64 as it can't be greater than 64. That is the limit. You can increase this, but Minecraft tends to send it 64. If the index is zero, so it's the input, or if the index plus one is one, so it's the other input, and flag is false, then we create another item stack um, for the other input. We get the cook time, which is another function I've got below, um, and set it to the total cook time for both of these stacks. We set the original cook time to zero, as it has finished cooking. And we mark dirty, if you hover over this, it'll tell you about it. Ensures the trunk contain the tile entity is saved to the disk later, the game will think it's changed and skip it. Basically saying it won't do the same thing over again. I think it's better to go for write NVT first. So we super off it first, then we write burn time to a integer, which we set as a short, cook time to an integer, and total cook time as an integer as well. We save all the item stacks in the inventory to the MBT, and if it has a custom name, um, we set our custom name to the custom name variable, and we return the compound. Then later, when we open up the tile entity again, it will read from the MBT, we get the inventory, which is where we get the size inventory with a non-null list. We then load all the item stacks back into the inventory. Um, we get the burn time, cook time, and total cook time. And we set the current burn time to be get item burn time of the current item that's in slot two, which is the fuel slot. And if it has the custom name um, key, then we set the custom name to that. Basically, what these two do is when we exit, it remembers everything that's going on inside the furnace, so when we open it back up, it'll continue doing the same things. Get inventory stat limit, we return 64, as that is the normal Minecraft stat limit. Is burning is one of my own created ones, it's in all furnaces though. It Basically, it's a boolean that returns true um, when the burn time is greater than zero, so when it's actually doing something. Then another static boolean is burning where we get field zero is greater than zero. So we're making sure that um, it is burning and this is just for the client side to make sure that these are both synced. The update function, I'm gonna go through in a second. So I'm just gonna go through some more simple functions at the start. Get cook time is an integer. This is how fast it cooks. Reducing this will increase the speed um, and reducing it will decrease the speed. Mine is the same as a normal furnace. Um, you could set up a system that for each different recipe um, will create different cook times. But for me, all the recipes are the same cook time. You could also set up an upgrade system in the future that if it was a certain um, level upgrade, it would be quicker than another level. But you can work it out for yourself. I might do that in the future, but for now, this can be much more simple than that. We just return and same speed for all of them. Right then, the private boolean can smelt is checking if it can smelt or not. So we check um, to see that both of slot zero and slot one, our input slots, aren't empty. If they are empty, then we return false. But if they aren't empty, we continue. Here, I get the result, which is going to be in my recipes. We'll create that this episode. So item set result is sintering furnace recipes I get the instance and I get the result. I'll show you that function later. If the result is empty, so if there isn't a result for that, then we can't do anything, we don't smelt, as we don't want two random items smelting. But if there is a result, we continue again. The output item stack is whatever is in, whatever is in the th field three, um, the output slot. If output is empty, then we it can smelt, as we don't want anything in there. But what we can do is if the there is the same item, um, as the one that's going to smelt. So if output is equal to the result, then we continue. But if it's not, as we're checking here, we return false. Um, the result count here, which I've called res, is output.getCount. So the number of things that were going to be outputted, that are currently in the output, sorry, plus the amount of things that'll be created after this smelt. As long as this um, integer here is less than the inventory stack limit, less than 64, uh, less than the max stack size, then we can return true, that we can smelt those items. 
and then the smelt item function if we can smelt so if we're allowed to if it's gone through all these functions and it, it can, is allowed to smelt we get the inputs these are the two inputs input one and input two our slot zero and one we get the result um, using our recipes class which I shall show you in a bit and output is slot 3 where the things are outputted to if output is empty to smelt an item all we do is copy over the result into that slot and if the out output um, is the same as the result I item we increase the amount of things in the output using the grow function. We grow by the amount of things that are going to be created. And then we obviously want to shrink the two inputs by one as we don't want to um, have unlimited smelting. The get item burn for, um, time here comes directly from the Minecraft furnace class where we get um, the burn time of each individual thing. You can add um, any of your custom blocks or items in here that will have their own smelting. This is the number of ticks it'll last for, and we return the value um, for anything else that isn't in here. We return the get fuel value function for the um, is item fuel checking if something is a fuel. Um, get item burn time has to be greater than zero, so it has to actually be able to burn. It's usable by player. What this means is when, how far away we can be, where we can still right click it and open the GUI, open inventory and close inventory. We don't use is item valid for slot so are we allowed to put the item in there if it's three so if it's the output slot we're not allowed to put anything inside the output slot if it's not two so if it's either of the inputs then we can put things in there you can put anything in there if it has a recipe or not and else so if it is slot two we check if it's a fuel and if it is a fuel we're allowed to put it in there if not we're not the gui id i'll change it to tm sintering furnace this doesn't really matter, but it just needs one to, for the save file. The get field, um, we switch the ID, and for case zero, we return the burn time. Case one, we return the current burn time. Two and three, these are just the IDs of each of our things. And set field, uh, we just set the burn time to the value, current burn time, cook time, and total cook time. There are four fields, so we return um, get field count four and to clear the inventory we just use this inventory clear now I'm going to go through and explain the update function update is what will happen every single tick and um, so it happens 20 times a second so we start off with two flags we check if it's burning we just create a flag called false which we'll set later if it's burning then we decrement the burn time here we minus minus burn time so we take one away from burn time if the world isn't remote, then we continue. Um, we create an item stack for the fuel. If this dot is burning, so if it's burning, we need to keep checking that throughout. If the fuel is not empty, input zero isn't empty, and input one isn't empty, then we continue. If it hasn't started smelting yet, and it can smelt, burn time is get item burn time, so we get the burn time. Current item burn time is equal to burn time as it's about to start smelting. If it is burning, um, flag one is true, so we set this to true. If the stack isn't empty and it's burning, um, then we we will create an item for the stack and shrink it by one. If the stack is now empty, uh, we create we get the contained item inside of the stack and we set fuel to be the item. So all this is doing is consuming fuel, this massive long function. The next part of this is if it is burning and it can smelt. So if it is actually started going and it's allowed to increase the cook time. If the cook time has reached what it requires to cook, the total cook time, we set it back to zero again. We set the total cook time, whatever cook time is required for this recipe. We then smelt the item. So it actually works. And we set flag one to true. If it doesn't happen, we set cook time to zero. If it is not cooking and cook time is greater than zero, this is just a checker, we clamp the cook time um, back to what it's originally meant to be. This is when um, you run out of fuel halfway through, um, halfway through cooking something, it will remove it back to zero. If flag isn't equal to this stop burning, then it has started burning. I'm gonna say burning three million times in this video. We set the state of our sintering furnace to be burning. So if we hover over set state, 
it wants a boolean if it's active and we set it to this dot is burning um where our um block will change state to have its animation of like the cooking or what i'm gonna have is something special when it's cooking and it stops when it's not and if flag one is true mark it dirty and that is the entire tile entity give it a save <laughs>